Hello, welcome to module 21 of NPTEL Concept Topology course part 2. Today's topic is stone check compactification. Having studied the minimal compactification, namely the Alexandrov's compactification, we shall now study the compactification that is maximal. The idea is to embed the given space in a large compact space and then take the closure of the image of this embedding. The large number of continuous maps of a completely regular space into the closure interval 0, 1 combined with the Tikhonov's theorem on product of compact spaces is the key in obtaining this maximal compact equation which goes under the name stone check compactification. You should remember that all this we are doing only for Hausdorff spaces. So, our first lemma which you can name as Tikhonov's embedding lemma is the following. Start with a topological space, any topological space and any family of continuous functions which I will denote f from x to the, the co domain is always x but codomain may change that I will denote a yf. Okay, so each member of G is a continuous function from X into some space that some space is Y F that's all. The evaluation map E from X into the product space Y F. You take the product of Y F as F ranges over this family. Okay, so evaluation map is defined remember the fth coordinate of E X for each x inside x, e x is a member of, e, I have defined it as an element of this product space. So, I define it by taking its fth coordinate to be fx. So, statement is that this evaluation map is continuous. The second part is, suppose the family G separates points of x, which just means that if you are given two distinct points x and x prime inside x, there exists a function f inside this family G such that fx is not equal to f of x prime that x and x prime have been separated by f that is the whole idea. So, if that condition is satisfied then the evaluation map E defined in part 1 is injective this is the second part. The third statement is again some condition on the family G. Suppose the family G separates points and closed sets. That is just saying that given a closed set and a point not in the closed set, there must be a function f inside G such that fx is not inside f of f closure. See, f is a closed set, f of f may not be a closed set. You take the closure of that, f of x little x must be outside this closure. But that is the meaning of this separation of a closed set and a point which is not there. If this condition is satisfied, then E is an open mapping of x onto its image which is E x that is what we have denoted ok. E is a function E x is the image ok. So, third statement is precisely that this E is an open mapping. An open mapping if the injective ok will be an embedding. So, that is why the name embedding in the lemma has come. So, there are three distinct uh, things here. So, one by one let us have its proof which are all straightforward proofs. The first thing is continuity of a function namely E, right. Where is it? It is some space 
x into the product space. A function into a product space we know is continuous. This is the this is the more or less a definition or the property of product space is continuous. Such a function is continuous if and only if all its coordinate functions are continuous, right? So starting with the g inside g, let us take this pi g to be the projection map from the product y f to y g. Okay, these are projection maps or coordinate projections. Then pi g of e operating upon any point x is nothing but g x by definition. So g x coordinate is g x. That is the definition of the point here, right? E x of f is f x. Put f equal to g. That is what you get here. All right. That, what does that mean? That pi g composite e is the function g. That function g is continuous because we have taken all functions inside this curly g to be continuous function. So, this will just complete the proof that e itself is continuous. The second part start with two points x and y not equal to each other inside x. So, the statement x and x prime are there, that is no problem. Okay, x and y are different points of this capital X. As soon as you have that, there will be some function f inside g such that f x is not equal to f y. So, that is the meaning of the property to that g separates points of x. Okay, that is the condition that you have used. As soon as f x is not equal to f y, remember f x is nothing but the f coordinate of e x and f y is the f coordinate of e y. We know that these two are different, f x is not equal to f y. So, two coordinates of a same some point, they are distinct, which means the points are different, that is all. So, property 2 is also proved. Okay. Now, the third statement. So, what we have to show? We have to show that starting with an open subset of x, take E u, okay. E u is open inside E x is what we have to show. Where is E x? E x is a subset of subspace of the product space. So, how do one show that something is an open subset in the in the in the subspace? Only if you have an open subset of the whole space and then you intersect it with the, the subspace, subset E x, right? So, we have to show that E u is open in E x, it is enough to show that given any point x inside you, there exists an open set V in the whole space, product space, namely Y f, f ranging on inside capital G, such that this way V has the property that E x belongs to this intersection V means it just belongs to E x always is inside E capital X intersection v this entire open subset must be concerned inside u is the construction once you have that you can range this x for different x for entire over u for each u this will be true so that will show that this uh, intersection this e u itself is open inside e x so i have to show that this e x e capital x intersection v that is contained inside E u. Okay, this is what we have to show that E x belongs to V is obvious. I mean, to begin with, we have taken such a open I and mean, we are we are constructing such an open set V. Okay, so let us see how to construct this V. For this, all that I do is choose f such that f x is not in f of u closure, then closure of that. Remember, u is an open set. So, so this is the complement. Sorry, this is not closure. The complement of u that is a closed set, and x is not in the complement of u because x is inside u, right? Therefore, we have such an f, namely, f x is not inside f of u complement closure. Okay, so such an f is there because of property three. Okay, but now, if you take V equal to 
pi f inverse of y f minus this subset. Okay, remember f of u c etc. Where, where, where does this belong to? This will be inside y f, right? Because f is a map from x to y f. So these are subsets of y f. Take the complement of f u complement closure. That is an open subset. So pi f inverse of that will be an open subset, and that is what I am taking v. Okay, so this v will be an open subset of now the entire product space because pi f is after all a projection map from the entire of this product space into y f, right? So this v is open. Obviously, e x belongs to v because pi f of uh, pi f of v x, which is nothing the e x of f is f x. So that is already there, all right? Because f x is not in this one means f x in the complement. That's all. Also, if x prime is any other point such that e x prime is also inside v, so that is the point some some other point of this intersection. Then what happens? F of x prime will be inside pi f of e x prime, right? Apply f to both sides. It will be pi f of e x prime. Is nothing but f of this one, right? So this will be inside y f minus f of complement of c bar. Okay, so that is just the meaning that x is not inside u c bar. Okay, which is same thing as saying that uh, u c which is what this is just complement. So this same thing as saying x is inside u. Therefore, e x intersection v is contained inside e u. Okay, so that will show that E u is open inside E x. So the lemma is proved. Now we can reap some important conclusion here. So that I am calling it as Tickknopf's embedding theorem. So for this, I start with a Tickknopf space. Tickknopf space means what? Completely regular and a Hausdorff or T1 space. So start with a Tikhonov space and let Fx be the set of all continuous maps f from x to 0, 1. So here I am having a liberal choice of this uh, curly G in the lemma. So curly G is the entire space of all continuous functions from x to 0. Okay. Then the evaluation map E from x to this closed interval 0, 1 taken product taken fx times. Okay. Indexed over fx for each point, each if continuous function, you take a copy. Earlier we had arbitrary yf. Now each yf is equal to the closed interval 0, 1. So that is the special case of this uh, previous lemma. So take that map that is an embedding. So that is a statement. This statement is an immediate consequence. All that you have to show you that the condition 2 and 3 are automatically satisfied if x is a Tikhonov space. A Tikhonov space is Hausdorff space. Okay, then we know that this is this is true, and uh, both each, each point is closed, and any disjoint two disjoint close point and a closed subset are separated is the complete regularity. So two and three will be automatically satisfied if y if x is for Tikhonov space. Of course, always the evaluation map is continuous. There is no uh, no extra assumption on this family G. So, 2 and 3 come only because we have assumed X is a Tikhonov space. So, what we have what is final conclusion is every Tikhonov space, the evaluation map from X to the product of 0, 1 taken Fx times, namely 
index over the family of continuous functions from x to 0 1 that itself is invalid all right now we make the definition of the stone check compact equation look at any tickner of space take fx and uh, the evaluation map etc as as we have just discussed earlier then the pair e the map e comma e x closure this closure is inside this product space this is called the stone check compact equation of the tickner space x of course the product space is compact every closed subset will be compact so that is why e x bar will be compact each each factor here is 0 1 that is Hausdorff space the product is Hausdorff space so the subspace is also Hausdorff space so these are all Hausdorff compact case okay and the image e x by the very definition is dense inside this uh, this whole space namely e x bar okay so all that is automatically satisfied so this is a compact equation of of x okay x can be identified with e x here through the embedding a e. then this x bar is just you know you can think of this as a extension of the space x itself so that is the way to think about a uh, compact equation however we have this elaborate uh, definition wherein we just don't forget the embedding the embedding e if this is different then we don't call it a, <laughs> a compact equation okay it's necessary that this is an embedding if you change the embedding it may be called a different uh, compact equation that's all we shall now establish a certain canonical property of stone check compact equation I will explain the word canonical a little bit later. Okay. As a preparatory result, we have this lemma. This itself is a, a, a some kind of you know canonical word already comes here. Uh, not the word, but the explanation comes here. Pay attention to this lemma. Let Z be any topological space. And theta from A to B, any set map. Okay, this is a set theoretic map, there is no topology here. The third is any topological space. Then the function theta star from z power b, z power b is what? z cross z cross z etc. taken b number of times indexed over this set b. To z power a, same thing, z taken, uh, product taken indexed over a here. So, what is this theta star? Theta star is look at any map from any element in z power b that is a function from b to z, right? So, composite with theta b to z you have the function alpha, composite theta alpha composite theta is a function inside uh, is an element inside a to z, right? That means z power a. So, this map itself is a continuous function where this z power b z power a are given product topology okay, under the product topology this theta star theta is any map there is no continuity condition there is no topology here but theta star there is product topology on both domain and co domain this theta star is continuous okay this is a statement uh, Looks somewhat strange, but proof is entirely one line here. Because what we have to do is to prove the continuity of a function into a product space, we have to check its continuity after composing with each coordinate function. That's all. Okay, so that we have to do. So here is a diagrammatic representation of theta star. Theta is this any function here. Each continuous function, each con sorry, each function, the b to z, these are set theory functions, right? Element, they are elements of z power b, just functions here, set theory functions. 
you compose this, then you get a theta star of alpha. This alpha going to theta star of alpha, the theta star is continuous, is what we want to show. For that, all that I have to do is for each point A inside A, okay, I have to show the pi A composite theta star is continuous. Okay, the, these are the projection uh, co coordinate projections of theta star. So, operate it on any alpha by the very definition, it is nothing but pi a of alpha composite theta because theta star of alpha is open through. But what is this one? This is nothing but alpha of theta a. Okay, so theta a is an element of B. Okay, alpha composite theta a is nothing but the projection map in the coordinate projection of theta a, okay, theta a projection of alpha. So, pi of theta alpha operating upon alpha, theta a operating upon alpha, okay. So, that is true for every alpha inside z power b. So, this just means that this pi a composite theta star is nothing but pi of theta a. So, all coordinate projections are continuous. So, that completes the proof that theta star is continuous. Okay, now I am making this statement about uh, theorem 5.23 x and y be any two Tikhonov spaces E x bar and E y bar. I will uh, denote our standard stone check computation in our notation, right? But just to be careful. I am taking E prime bar here, so that uh, there is no confusion that E, E, etc. Uh, how can the, they be same maps? They are after all not same maps. The domain of E is X here, the domain of Y is E prime here. That is why I have domain of Y prime is, the, sorry, domain of E prime is Y here. So, so I do not, do not want to use the same notation here, that is all. So, take E X bar e prime y bar these are the stone check compactifications of x and y respectively now given any map f from x to y there is a unique map sf from e x bar to e prime y bar such that sf this is the new function the existence of which is stated here as well as uniqueness it has the property that SF composite E is E prime composite F. So, look at this diagram. F is here. E is going into E x bar here. E prime is going into E x prime. These are two stone check complications. There will be a continuous function here SF which makes this diagram commutative. Same thing as saying you come with F, of F here and follow E prime the same thing as first you go by E and then take SF, okay. There may be many functions, no, there is only one function like this, a unique map F at, okay. So, that is the SF, that is the conclusion of the first part here. Second part says, in particular, if Y itself is compact Hausdorff space, we get a unique map again f at from e x bar to y which is an extension of f again extension means what now f hat composite e is equal to f the function is from e x bar if you restrict it to just e x which is the copy of x that is the function f itself so that is why this f hat is called extension that's all Okay, so that is the second part here. I will explain this one once we complete the proof of the first part. Okay, let us start uh, with the uniqueness part of the existence of this this function SF. Suppose you have any topological space, any Hausdorff space P, and two continuous functions from some space into B, okay, such that if you look at the set A, A belong to A, that H1 of A equal to H2 of A, 
that set is always a closed subset of A. So that is the property of the Hausdorffness of B of the codomain. So this is one thing which we have several times used at least in the part one. So here also we are using it. Okay, this is one of the properties of Hausdorffness. Therefore, so now I am going to use for the uniqueness part, I am going to use the the stone check complete equation E prime of Y bar, this is Hausdorff space. Okay. So if you apply this conclusion here to G1 and G2 two functions from E x bar to E prime Y bar such that G1 of G1 composite E equal to G2 composite E, okay, both of them are what by the very definition and by the very condition they must be equal to E prime composite F. G1 composite E must also have this property, G2 composite must also it is a property, therefore G1 of E equal to G2 of E. Okay. That just means that set of all points wherein set of all points of E x bar, let us call it Z, wherein G1 of Z equal to G2 of Z, that is a closed subset because what is the meaning of G1 of Z equal to G2 of Z? They are functions from, they are points from E x bar, no, functions from E x bar to U i bar. This is a closed subset, right? This, sorry, this is Hausdorff space. Therefore, this is a closed subset. Okay, so that is by this observation. But now, what is the meaning of G1 Z equal to G2 Z? So, it's the points which are inside E x bar. Automatically, functions for E x will have this property because of this one. So that means all points of E x will satisfy this property, right? G1 of E x, I will put Z equal to E x equal to G2 of E x, right, e, 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 Z is E x. So, all points of E x have this property. This means that E x is contained inside this set and this is a closed set. So, E x, okay, con is contained inside this closed set, it means its closure is also contained inside closed set. But the closure is the whole space. Okay, if some subset is contained in a closed set, the closure will be also contained inside that. That's all I'm using. So it's the whole space. So what is the meaning of that? Set of all points uh, e, e x bar, wherein g1 equal to z2 is the whole space. Just means g1 is equal to z2. That's all. So this means that if there are two functions like this, okay, <laughs> they must be equal. Like this means what? commuting uh, continuous functions which which uh, have this commuting property namely sf composite e equal to e prime composite f okay now i have to show the existence because of uniqueness then i can main name it it just depends upon f so i am calling it as sf s for stone check computation okay f is any any given continuous function between just these must be taken off spaces so that I can talk about stone check compatifications here. So let us go to the existence part now. Given a function f from x to y, first we define f star from f y to f x. Remember f y denotes all continuous functions from y into 0 1. Similarly, fx denotes all continuous functions from x into 0, 1. Starting with a function from y to 0, 1, you compose it with f, you get a function from x to 0. 1. So, f star of alpha is just alpha composite f. Okay. Next thing is, I'll do one more composition here. Let f double star from 0, 1 raised to fx into 0, 1 raised to fy just the way we defined it in the lemma that is z raised to b to z raised to a right so that is what we are going to do this f star is stated as a theta then theta star will be this f double star all that i have to do is this map is phi going to phi composite f star so the f star 
is uh, theta is replaced by f star here. Okay. So once you have that, see this is a diagram is shown here. Starting with alpha, you compose it with f to get f star of alpha. So codomain here is always i. Once you have that f star of alpha, so the function f star is here. Starting with any function phi, again you compose it with f star, you get f double star. So, so you have done the compositions twice here. Okay. This f double star is now from set of all functions from you know fx to i, namely the product space i raised to fx to i raised to fy. These are both product spaces. This is continuous. Continuity of this is the statement of this lemma 5.22. Okay, I am going to use that lemma now. Okay. So I have got starting with f from x to y, I have got a function in the product spaces. All that I have to do is that this same function will restrict itself to the stone check compactifications of fx and fx y fy respectively sorry of x and y respectively inside these product spaces okay so that is the next step we have to do so we claim that in this following picture you start with f here and you have got f star here f double star here e x bar is sitting here E prime y bar is sitting here. These are the stone check complications. Okay. First, I want to show that all these solid arrows, they are, they form a commutative diagram. The outermost one. This is a dotted figure, dotted uh, arrow. This is also dotted arrow. So what I do is once you have this, you take this subset E x here f double star of e x goes inside e prime y i will show once i show that automatically its closure and the same map uh, f double star will go into this one so these dotted lines will come once i show this the entire figure so automatically these are nothing but just the restrictions of f double star corresponding okay so automatically what will happen if I take SF here, E goes all the way from X to here and take SF that is same thing as first take F then come by E prime. Alright. So let us all that I have to show this is that this map into IF, okay, IF followed by f double star is same thing as f followed by this e prime here the evaluation maps t and e prime remember they are actually maps from x into i raised to f x y into i raised to f y all right so that is a tautological thing actually fixing each x belonging to x i have to show that f double star of e x is equal to e prime of f x okay this is the same thing as proving remember what is the definition of f double star f double star of e x is a function operating upon any index alpha is by definition e x operating upon alpha of f right so that is same thing as e prime operating upon fx of alpha okay so this is what i have to prove but this is the same thing as proving that now alpha composite f operating upon x this part alpha composite f operating upon x is the x of that is equal to alpha of fx this is another evaluation map so if i prove this okay then i will have to prove this one this is by definition I have to prove this, which is the same thing as proving this, but this is obvious, okay, because there is a double a composition here, alpha composite f is alpha of fx, that's all. Alright, so I repeat now, having proved, 
having proved that this solid diagram is commutative, all that I have to do is now f double star of e x is contained inside e prime y. But that is obvious because of this uh, commutativity. Take a point here, which comes from here. Okay. So, wherever it goes, this part has to come from here now, e, e prime y, because f of e prime, e prime is factoring here, e prime y, that's all. So, this is purely just a set theoretic observation. Okay. So, any point E x is nothing but coming from E of this one. F double star of that by definition is equal to first F of something and then E prime of it, whatever. E prime of this is E prime of y and then that is the inclusion map. So, so that is the purely an observation, right. Once you have that, when you take the closure and then F double star by continuity of F double star, it is contained inside f double star e x then take the closure. This is already inside e prime of y so it is contained inside e prime closure. Alright. So, this dotted arrow is also justified and you just name this for SF. It is just a convenient notation. Extra you can f double star can always make sense but SF makes sense only and you have stone check compatibility. All right. The last part, remember what was the last part here? In particular, when y is a compact Tostron space. What is E prime y? E prime y will be a compact subset of a Hofstadt space. Therefore, it is closed already. So, e prime y bar will be equal to e prime y which is a copy of y. So, the stone check compactification of a compact space is itself, okay, itself means what e y is homeomorphic to y, right. So, the map S f is actually from e x bar to y itself, this e y bar is just y itself. Then when you may say, when you say it is y itself, you are identifying this e prime y with y via e prime here. Okay, so you are thinking this as an identity map. That is why you have simple notation here. If you write SF equal to f hat here, treat it as a function into y, then what you have got f hat composite e, which is nothing but SF composite e is just f because e prime is uh, treated as an identity map. Okay. So, second part just follows because a compact Hoster space has its stone check compactification is the same as itself. That is all. Okay. So, this is obtained very easily. All that you have to say f hat you know, it is E prime inverse of S f or if you do not want to do all that, you think of E prime as identity map that or the inclusion map that is all. So, I will restate more or less this one, what, what is the meaning of whatever we have done. This theorem has many, many way of interpretations. So, the stone check compactification is the maximal compactification among all Hausdorff compactifications of a Tikhonov space. Only when we have Tikhonov space, we can talk about stone check compactification. Okay, and that is a Hausdorff compactification. Look at all other Hausdorff compactification. This will be larger than that. Remember, we have a partial ordering defined on all compact equations of a given space. If you restrict only to Hausdorff compact equations, amongst all of them, the stone check is largest. Okay. If eta compo eta comma y is a Hausdorff compact equation of a Tikhonov space X, X is fixed, look at any Hausdorff compact equation. Then we just take eta hat 
remember in the previous theorem for any if this is a uh, compact space okay this is also compact torso space is also tikhna space so whenever you have a map like this you have eta hat but eta hat is now ex bar to y itself such that e followed by eta hat is eta so that is precisely the meaning that this compactification is bigger than this compactification that e ex bar is bigger than eta comma y okay so that is just a restatement of the previous second part of the previous theorem you may say but that has more content than this one this is just a consequence of that theorem so i make a remark here in theorem 5.23 it is easy to check that if y is x itself and f from x to y is identity map then this sf is nothing but the identity map of ex bar to ex bar second com comment here is if z is another tikhna space g from y to z is another continuous map continuous function then you can look at s of g composite f from g composite f will be from where to where from x to z right so that is nothing but sg composite sf see s of g composite f is from ex bar to ez bar so in between you have this ey bar so ex bar to ey bar to ez bar you have sg composite sf so i will leave this one uh, this verification this is just purely set theory verification to you but the important property importance of this one is that these two properties actually have a very good name they are called canonical properties or functorial properties the adjective canonical that we have used in the map sf is precisely for this reason a and b that is the meaning of this this uh, canonical okay finally we shall end this uh, topic today by giving a characterization of stone check compactification you can also call this universal property okay for a tikhnov space x stone check compactification e comma ex bar is characterized by the property this property i am calling it as p given any continuous function f from x to the closed interval 0 1 there is a unique continuous function f at from ex part to 0 1 which extends f again extends f in the sense f at composite e is f in the theorem we have proved that this ex bar has the property instead of taking 0 1 here i could have taken any compact okay that is the second part of the previous theorem in the characterization we are restricting it to only 0 1 only the the codomains are always just 0 1 so this is a lot you know uh, cutting down if, if something has every compact space of course it will have this property also you don't have to verify it for all compact spaces this you have to verify it for only 0 1 so that is the the beauty of this characterization the characterization has the has its own use you don't have to every time use the property that ex bar is sitting in a product space remember this was taken as a subspace of certain product space right you don't have to use that product structure or anything you can just use this property so that will be automatically give you the stone check compactification take any compactification of a of a tikhanov space which has this property it has to be stone check competition so that is the whole idea so proof is not all that difficult first of all 
the stone chip compactification itself has this property as a special case of 5.23 which i have just told by taking y equal to 0 now i want to prove the corner suppose eta z is some hausdorff compact equation of x which has the above mentioned property property p applying 5.24 we get a continuous map tau from e x bar to z such that tau composite e equal to eta okay so this just means that e e x bar is bigger than equal to eta z all right this you have already proved i am just repeating this part right every stone check compact equation is the largest this was some compact equation which is large what we have to prove is this is also larger than that one then because all of them are Hausdorff spaces by our five point earlier remark uh, two lectures before we have done it will follow that they are equal so it remains to prove that e eta z is bigger than equal to e comma e x bar which is the same thing as you must find a tau prime from z to e x bar such that tau prime composite eta equal to e so you have to reverse the arrow here okay similar to this one you have to do the other way around z to e x bar you have to find okay so this also not very difficult but it is something new so that's why i have to give you a complete proof so what is the assumption eta z satisfy the set property p right therefore for each f inside fx what is fx continuous functions from x to the closed interval 0 1 let us take f hat from z to i the unique map which has f hat composite to equal to f so this is the property p every function there is an f hat once you have this define tau prime from z to the product space 0 1 raised to fx by the formula tau prime of z is that element which has its fth coordinate equal to f hat of z so the tau prime z is defined by this equation for each f this is tau prime of f is f hat of z so that defines a point here for each z i want to say that first of all this is continuous why because what is its f coordinate it's f hat so if f coordinate is f hat i mean each coordinate is continuous therefore the function is continuous so tau prime is continuous okay so continuity of this function is fine moreover if you come from eta remember eta is a function from x to z right so take eta x and look at tau prime of eta x what is it operating upon f it's f hat of eta x f hat of eta is nothing but f so it's fx but what is fx it's ex of f by definition of evaluation map therefore if this is true for every f tau prime of eta x is nothing but e x so that is true for every x it just means that tau prime of eta is e okay in particular this implies that tau prime of eta x is contained inside e capital x therefore tau prime of z z is what eta x closure right so i have to take tau prime of eta x closure okay so that is contained inside the closure can be pulled out so but that is nothing but e x bar so tau prime though it is starting with a map from z to 0 and raised to fx it says image inside the stone check compactification so take that map tau prime as a function from z into e x bar so we have already shown that tau prime composite eta equal to e oh, that completes the proof of the characterization also 
all right so i will end this uh, talk today with a general remark now there are many many interesting compact vacations depending on the kind of spaces and the kind of problems that we are studying the problems that whatever you are interested in so each kind of problems there may be some compact vacations to go to simplify the problem and try to get answers and then come back and so on that is the game here we mention a few of them other than the alexandrov's one point compactification and stone check compactification the smallest one and the largest one we have discussed okay so wallman compactification is another important one which is much more general than these two compactifications namely it works for all t1 spaces okay and stone check compactification is one of the most popular compactifications but this wallman compactification also equally popular that's what i wanted to say this will be taken in a later chapter okay so wallman compactification we are not going to leave out in the study of manifolds you may come across with problems of putting boundary to the manifold since you don't know much about manifolds i can't explain this part much i this is only for information okay which if you remember oh then you may say oh, oh this is what uh, was told to us and so on that's all okay so that bound putting a boundary is actually some kind of a compactification a further special case is the so called space time compactification which is interesting in the relativity theory another point of view taken takes you to the study of ends for example you will see that the real number system the, the real line has two ends whereas the complex plane has only one end i don't want to elaborate anything more than that but these are all you know part and parcel of various types of compactification in algebraic geometry you come across with algebraic compactification the projective spaces are standard examples of what of affine spaces cn the compactifications of cn there are many of them okay while studying topological groups you may come across what is called as bohr compactifications maybe when you compactify you would like to retain the topological group structure itself there you see the group structure should also extend and so on okay so this is related to the study of what is called almost periodic functions so when you are studying that you will coming with come across bohr compactification with this uh, many uh, little bit of remarks so let us end uh, today's talk so next time we will take a different topic thank you